When it comes to monitoring bone health progress between imaging studies like REMS or DEXA, I like to use bone turnover markers like CTX and P1 and P. I believe that we should look at these in tandem when tracking progress, but today I'm just going to focus on CTX. What I want to do in this video is to share my three favorite tools to bring CTX down. CTX is also known as citalopeptide. It's a fragment of collagen that gets released every time bone is broken down. It's kind of like catching the fingerprints of osteoclast in the act, but in a blood test. When you have high CTX, it means that your bones are breaking down quickly. Low CTX means that your bone loss is significantly slower. And again, today I want to go through my top three tools to reduce CTX. These are three very different levers, and they're all backed by evidence. They all lower bone resorption and help you possibly reverse osteoporosis. All right, sorry to interrupt this video, but I want to take a moment and talk about this product by 4Well. It's specifically a product utilizing DHEA, saw palmetto, and collagen all together in one. And the reason why I want to talk about this is that you may have heard me discuss DHEA for bone health. In the videos that I did on this topic, DHEA is an interesting pro-hormone that's available over the counter, and it has been studied for bone, but only in what I think are relatively big doses. So 50 milligrams for women and 100 milligrams for men. The challenge here is that if you use these doses of DHEA alone, clinically, what we saw is that women were complaining about oily skin, acne, and potentially even hair loss. So we backed that down and now in our clinical practice use doses between 5 and 20 milligrams. But there are ways to utilize larger doses and potentially even have a positive impact on your hair. And what they did in this product is specifically use things like saw palmetto and collagen to help block the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone and also provide your hair some of the building blocks that it needs through collagen. So let me explain. This product uses 50 milligrams of DHEA, which again is the dose that was studied, but adding in 500 milligrams of saw palmetto and 350 milligrams of collagen. Now the saw palmetto is interesting because this is an herb that uses the same mechanism as finasteride, which is a well-known and well-used hair loss drug. It helps to improve hair loss in both men and women. Now, this enzyme is responsible for the conversion of testosterone to the more active androgenic form dihydrotestosterone, particularly in the periphery, meaning in the skin. So it can actually have an impact on hair. And so we see this both with finasteride, but you also see studies seeing it with soft palmetto too. Now, the collagen is actually here to provide the building blocks, and we know that collagen in different forms and different doses can be good for our skin, hair, and nails. I don't think anybody's disputing that. But when you combine all three, what I think is really compelling is you can take DHEA at higher doses for people who are sensitive like I am, and I've been taking uh, the men's version of this product, which has 50 milligrams of DHEA, which I would not have been able to tolerate alone, and I have not had any androgenic side effects whatsoever. So if you want to check out this product called Advanced Formula Saw Palmetto for Women, this is by the company For Well, and you can take a look at their Amazon store, look at the link in the description here on YouTube, and use the code Dr. Doug For Well. That's D R D O U G the number four in well, W-E-L-L, -L, and you'll get 10% off of anything in their inventory. So we're gonna start with a hormonal approach, and then we'll explore a powerful plant extract. And then finally, we're gonna look at a surprisingly powerful natural protein. Of course, if you've heard me discuss these before, you know that we need to look at both bone breakdown and bone building, because ultimately, osteoporosis or bone building is a, uh, an imbalance of bone or a rebalancing of bone. But that's the marker P1 and P. That's the bone building marker. And we're going to do that in another video to keep these short. So make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when that one goes live because you need both pieces of this. So let's dive in. So first we're going to start with hormones. Now estradiol, estrogen, by itself is hands down the biggest lever you can use to reduce CTX outside of bone health pharmacological drugs. Even at low doses, you can see pretty tremendous impact, and I'm going to show you some evidence of that. When I was looking up recent evidence, I actually ran across something that I found interesting from an endocrine society meeting. And the reason why I find this interesting is that as we move forward and away from the Women's Health Initiative, we are finally seeing new research on the tools that we actually want to know about. I'm tired of extrapolating data from old studies using hormones that we don't actually use anymore, using oral 
Premarin or conjugated equine estrogen instead of looking at transdermal estrogen products like estrogen patches, estrogen gels, and compounded creams. It's time that we start looking at these actual tools that we're using that are taking up the majority of the market share right now because we know that they are safer based off of research. But we need to keep researching them to answer the questions like this. So this is a study that did this. Now, it's actually not a peer-reviewed journal article yet. This was an abstract, but it appears to be well done. So we'll take it for what it is. What the researchers did was to randomize postmenopausal women into three groups. They all were using estradiol, but in different ways. So they were using either a cyclic estradiol rhythm, so they were using a, a lower dose and then a higher dose, and it was actually a 25 microgram followed by a 50 microgram per day patch. And this would be sort of luteal and follicular, so I guess you could switch those if you wanted to. But this is a cyclic style of dosing. And then there was a second group that was on a relatively, I would call it a very low dose patch, which is a 25 microgram per day patch. And then also a 50 microgram per day patch, which they called a quote unquote standard dose. I don't like that terminology, but it is a commonly used starting point at least. And then they tracked bone turnover markers and they tracked P1 and P and CTX. Now we're only gonna mention P1 and P here because it's, it's important as part of this discussion, but really focusing on the CTX piece. So here's what happened. In the first month, bone formation markers actually went up. So P1 and P went up. And this is what we see as we start to implement an HRT strategy in women who are not on HRT. So obviously postmenopausal women here. After that first month though, P1 and P started to decline as we would expect it to as CTX starts to come down. What's interesting though is that the cyclic group actually declined less than did the, the daily static dosing group. So the group on 25 and 50 micrograms that were taking the same dose every day the cyclic group had a better response in P1 and P. But again, story for another day. But when it comes to CTX, all three groups saw significant drops in CTX as you went out to the four month mark. Now, the higher the dose, the bigger the drop. And this actually matches what we see in our practice, which is if you optimize estradiol, you can see dramatically lowered CTX rates as you increase estradiol dosing, optimizing estradiol, FSH, and CTX together. So the biggest drop that we saw was in, again, the highest dose, and that was 177 nanogram per liter, which is a significant reduction. Clinically, we have seen more than that, and consistently we see bigger than that, again, when we optimize hormone levels. The cyclic group, even though they were using 25 and 50 microgram patches, saw 143 nanogram, and then the lowest dose, the static 25 microgram, was 112 nanogram per liter reduction. So the takeaway here is that Estradiol has a significant impact on CTX. We see it consistently day in and day out. Optimizing estradiol, I think, will give you better results even than they saw in these studies. But then how do you do that? What's right for you? That is the art and the magic of hormone optimization. Now, I've already done additional videos on this topic, so I'm not going to go into great depth in the detail here. This is shown over and over again in the literature. And there is also evidence looking at cyclic strategies versus static strategies. And we talk about those again in additional videos. We'll drop those into the show notes and into the description on YouTube. All right, now let's turn to this plant extract that I mentioned earlier. So this plant extract is called French Maritime Pine Bark Extract. This is a very powerful antioxidant and it has been studied independently for bone health, which is really cool. So there are several different names that are all the same herb that are then extracted in different ways and they all have different research behind them. And we'll talk about specifically the Libitrol Ox product here. So the benefit here seems to be coming through the antioxidant pathways. This is an herb that is very high in this class of antioxidants called procyanidines. And we know that there's benefit from an antioxidant pathway as well as some other vascular benefits. So you'll see it in a number of different products, but you'll see it in different names too. So some of the trademark names are oligopin, and this is the one that's been studied specifically for bone. Pycnogenol is another version of this, studied more in the vascular space with other antioxidant benefits, but both are very, very similar. They're just different standardized extracts that have different names and ultimately trademarks made by different companies. So what's the impact on CTX then? Well, the impact goes through, again, the oxidative pathways. So we know that oxidative stress and inflammation are tightly linked to bone resorption. 
The more oxidative stress that's going on, the more osteoclasts get activated. And the higher your CTX goes, because they're the things that are gonna break down bone and ultimately result in CTX levels going up in the blood. This has been studied by a particular research group and published on actually a couple of times. And what they've shown is that there's actually improved vascular function, there's reduced oxidative stress, and they measured bone turnover markers and CTX went down by about 10 to 15% compared to baseline. It's pretty cool. So when you look at the details here, what we see is that an herb like this, because of the polyphenols, we see them actually boosting nitric oxide, reducing free radicals, and reducing inflammation and oxidative stress. So this makes the environment much happier for bone activity. It is less favorable for osteoclast activity. So again, if our goal is to reduce osteoclast function and improve osteoblast function, then this is a tool that we can use to do that and there's very little risk, and it also has potential benefits for your vascular system because it's actually also shown to reduce oxidized LDL, which is, again, a whole nother story, but this is a good thing. So this is a, a nice product that we can use to have both an impact on, on a bone health perspective, but also on your vascular system and hopefully reduce cardiovascular risk too. All right, so I'm gonna get to our third one here shortly, but before I do, know that all of these tools are different things that can be utilized in conjunction with all of the major lifestyle modifications that we can make in order to improve our bone health. However, there are a lot of errors that I see people make. And now that we have through the, our community, the Osteo Collective, through our YouTube channel, and through our other avenues that we're talking to people about bone health, we see the same mistakes over and over again because we're now seeing thousands and thousands of people go through this bone health journey. I would love to, for you, collapse your time to success by telling you what the top five mistakes are. We do this in our masterclass, and if you haven't been to our masterclass yet, please come take a look, listen to me talk about the top five mistakes that people are making in their bone health journey so we can collapse your time to success. And then we also usually leave about 20 minutes for Q&A so you could potentially get some of your questions answered. If that's of interest to you, Take a look in the description on YouTube or you can visit our website at osteocollective.com. Now let's get into this third one. So this third one again is a protein found in nature. It's called lactoferrin. And lactoferrin is a protein that is found both in raw milk as well as colostrum products. Now notice I said raw milk because this is a very delicate protein. It's very sensitive to heat. And if you pasteurize dairy, which most dairy is pasteurized, if you pasteurize dairy, the lactoferrin will be gone. So the only way to get it would be to consume relatively large volumes of raw milk if you have access to a safe product there, or you can get it through supplementation. And this is what the studies looked at specifically. So there are a couple of studies that I have linked here, and essentially what we see is that lactoferrin on its own can reduce CTX by around 30%. That's pretty remarkable. Now, one of these studies was actually big enough and followed long enough to see an increase in bone mineral density too. Also pretty remarkable for a supplement alone. So how could that be? Well, lactoferrin, because it is part of this anabolic mix of things that come in dairy, it's also part of another supplement called milk basic protein or MBP, which you'll see sold in different ways, but you can get lactoferrin separately in higher doses. We know that dairy in general, if you tolerate it, is going to be anabolic. We know that milk is mother nature's way to help little animals become big animals very quickly, right? So milk has this potential. Again, if you can tolerate it, you could potentially get it through milk or we can do it in super physiologic doses and get the desired effect that we're looking for. Like most natural things, like most natural approaches to bone health, they're going to both work on the osteoblast side and osteoclast side. So what we're looking at specifically here though is what it's going to do for slowing down bone loss through CTX. I'll probably talk about this one again when we do a video on P1 and P because it does have a significant impact on P1 and P, the bone building marker. But again, a 30% reduction in CTX is no joke. And so this is an interesting product where we would use this for someone, you know, just for bone if they wanted to, or we also could look at other reasons to potentially include lactoferrin in a supplement stack, and that would be around areas of iron overload specifically. Because lactoferrin, notice the ferrin part like ferritin, lactoferrin has an impact both on iron absorption and on iron regulation within the body. So it can help to mobilize iron. I've seen it to, to reduce ferritin in blood. So iron metabolism is complex, not gonna talk about it here, but this is a tool that could potentially used, be used in certain scenarios around iron metabolism. All right, so let's wrap this up and let's talk about some specific products here then. So estradiol, which can restore the foundational hormonal balance of bone resorption and building. Estradiol is a key hormone for both men and women when it comes to bone. 
French maritime pine bark extract or oligopen lowers oxidative stress, reduces inflammation, and can slow down osteoclasts. Lactoferrin not only blocks resorption, but also actively stimulates bone formation and osteoclast development. These are three different pathways. They're complementary strategies, and they're all measurable in real time by CTX in blood. So again, how are we using these in practice? Well, estradiol, we prefer transdermal or topical approaches. So this could be through patch, through gels, through creams. There's a lot of ways to get it through the skin, but we like going through the skin because it reduces the risk compared to oral estradiol and certainly compared to synthetic estradiols. And then we are optimizing this by using blood testing, including estradiol, FSH, and CTX if we're optimizing for bone. For oligopin, if you look specifically at the product Lipitrol Ox, this is the one that we're frequently recommending because again it lowers oxidative stress reduces inflammation and can actually lower oxidized LDL too and when it comes to lactoferrin we're using products from the the company allergy research group or ARG uh, Gero also makes a good product here this is going to be somewhere in the 250 to 350 milligram range and if you need access to these products we do have a full script account that you can take advantage of just look for the link and how to do that again in the description or you can check us out at osteocollective.com so that's it for this video those are my top three recommendations to reduce CTX through either hormones or supplementation. And please remember too that strong bones mean more than just density. They mean freedom, resilience, and a future you can look forward to. I'll see you in the next video.